Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and it's uh, it's one of those real in the bag days. So uh, play along with me as we see if we can service and reassemble a Pier 209 uh, fishing reel. So this one was taken apart by a viewer, and I guess um, it, in parts it remains. I guess either because they didn't have the time to uh, to service this, or they just. Uh, thought it was beyond their uh, ability to do so. So uh, play along with me. Uh, I'm not going to do this one with a schematic. I know this reel pretty well, but I would recommend if, if you've got one of these and you don't know uh, how this reel is laid out or the pieces and parts that belong to it, go to mysticparts.com and uh, pull a schematic for your fishing reel. And that way you can uh, line up your pieces and parts as you take them off. Uh, so we're going to get started on this one since this cage for the most part is um, Already set aside here. Let's uh, just make sure that all of the teeth on the idler gear. That's the plastic gear there uh, That they're all working and that it's easily turning the, uh, the Sprocket that turns the worm gear and they are And while this side is open I noticed two things we have the incorrect screw on the bottom plate here So we're going to take that out there should only be a short screw there. This one's got a long screw. I guess we'll go find where that uh, short screw is over time. Probably one of the crossbars here, but uh, we're going to take that out and make sure that we replace that. And while we're at it, we're going to use some real grease. In this case, it's pen precision real grease to just put a good glob of that in the, uh, the back uh, burring there. And I'm just going to use a paper towel here. There's some surface oils on here. I'm just going to Kind of clean that off while we're doing this. With that said, then we can put that aside. The other big piece that belongs in that assembly is the spool. So let's just uh, go ahead, grab that spool, make sure that it's clean on all sides. The reel appears to be clean, just uh, in pieces and parts. We're going to just put some grease onto the gear that drives that idler gear and to the stud that sits in the bearing assembly. I'm going to put the back in, and just because I don't like the way the whole line lays on reels, uh, we'll just kind of see if we can't clip that off there. Easier said than done. There we go. got that off. That'll probably wind up on my bench in, in another reel somewhere, but uh, that's the assembly that we're going to work with there. Okay, now we're going to grab the side plate. And um, it looks like, for the most part, that the side plate uh, is okay. Again, there's a lot of oil on this. So let's just wipe some of that excess oil off. Got a loose burring here for some reason. Let's tighten that up. Nope, still don't have the right one. So if, you, uh, if you're investing in a reel that's in pieces and parts, maybe you find it at a flea market or something, uh, discount the, 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 uh, the claims of the owner. Assume that there's parts missing. And uh, when you're negotiating, just uh, you know, tell them you want $5 off or whatever it might be because it's got to be reassembled and you got to take a chance on the parts. And there's certainly no way where you're negotiating where you're going to be able to spread all the parts out on the table with a um, um, schematic diagram, match them all up, right? So uh, sort of like this, I'm taking it out word that all of the pieces are in here. I do have a stock of some of these parts should they be missing, but I'm hopeful that uh, they're not missing. All right, so this is cleaned. We, we took out a paper towel, cleaned all of this, put some grease onto the eccentric. The spring is in good condition. We tightened up the bearing in the back there. Now we're going to uh, look for some pieces and parts to put that assembly together. So there's, there's two springs that belong in the cavities here, so let's go ahead and put those in. Now we're going to look for the yoke, and the, I'm just going to put these parts, I think, right into the, the tray here at this point. Careful not to have them jump all over the place. I'm looking for the jack. Or the yoke, for the gear, looking for the 
lets you complete that assembly. So we're going, again, these are nice and clean. Put it there. So we'll put a little bit of grease onto the shoulders. I'm using Pen Precision Real Grease. It's the, uh, it comes in a tub. You can buy it in a, a small quantity on uh, Amazon or uh, other online sites. Uh, or you can buy the big tub, depending on the type of uh, repair you do and how much. But uh, Most people do not need to pound. Two ounces will last pretty much a long time. Especially if you're just servicing the reels on an annual basis, which is what I recommend. You take the jack and we'll hook that underneath the, uh, the stud on the eccentric over the shoulders of the yoke. And note that on that spool gear, or pinion gear, there's a slot. That slot belongs out, and that slot is going to grab the shoulder on the spool here. So if it's easy enough to, to reverse that and have the flat side of the, the gear showing outwards as you go to install, that would be a mistake. All right, let's build the bridge then. We have a bridge, and I don't know if this has been serviced or not, so we're going to knock the, we're going to take off the gear sleeve. Sometimes easier said than done. I'm going to use a pin to uh, knock the pin out. There's a, a pin here that holds the gear sleeve on. And once I get it started, I should be able to push it out. You can see it's just getting started now. Yep, it's going to be stubborn. So. Uh, Bear with me, we, do, we, get, we get it, it just takes some time. And now we should be able to grab that with the pliers to pull the rest of the way out. Be careful with these, don't, uh, don't go crazy or be aggressive with them. But you need to pull the pin out before you can remove the gear sleeve. There we go, now I took it all the way out. Now the gear sleeve can come out. And that's because there's usually junk that accumulates on the bottom of the gear sleeve and in the grooves of the gear sleeve and that will bog a reel down over time. So let's get that cleaned up there. This is the channel where that pin runs that we just took out and that's what holds the sleeve on. So, so far we're doing pretty good. Looks like we have the pieces and the parts. We're in the process of cleaning it up and lubricating it. Gonna put some grease onto the uh, bridge post, put the gear sleeve back on, grab the pin which I left on the table there, put that pin back in, and when you put the pin back in you got to make sure you clear this shoulder here, because if you don't the main gear won't go on. Speaking of the main gear that would be up next. It looks like it has the assemblies inside for the drag washers, but we're going to just uh, make sure that they're all there. So main gear, you want to check the teeth on the main gear, make sure they're not banged up in any way. Ch no chips, dents, bruises and the like. Let's get some grease on that. And we can seat that. All right, so these are the HT100 drags. There's a lot of grease on that. You don't need all that grease, but uh, better than not. And then the way these lay out is you have the fabric, you have a hard washer that's a circle, you have your second fabric washer, you have what's called an eared washer. It has a circle on the side and it has two studs that ride into the the main gear, you have to look for the inserts in the main gear so that it sits properly. And then you have to look for the other drag washers. So I have a, here we go. So we have the last of the drag washers. And we have the one that's called the keyed washer, or the one with the two flat sides and then rounded. That fits over the main gear. And then there's a cap washer which goes on top of that. This would be the cap washer. That's all together now. And we can go ahead and install this. So we're going to grab the bridge assembly, we're going to push down on the pinion gear, we're going to rotate that bridge assembly over so that it kind of traps that uh, pinion gear. We're going to find a threaded 
one screw. That would be this one. And we're going to say a quick prayer hoping that the dog spring is in this here. And it is, I see it in the parts tray. And that's why I use a parts tray. It's one central place to look. This is your, your dog spring. It's just a small spring. It sits in the cavity here that was created when we mounted the dog with that uh, spring. In that goes. And that's properly set now. And then you complete the rotation of the bridge. And while we're doing that, I want to give a special shout out to our first responders, our essential personnel, and the folks that are helping to keep us safe during this pandemic. Uh, it's not over till it's over, so even though it seems to be relaxing a little bit, just please be cautious. Listen to what we're being told. Please behave responsibly. Uh, wear the masks or whatever else is required of us, wherever it's required. And uh, thank, thank your first responders and your essential personnel along the way. Uh, they've done a heck of a job to try to ensure that we remain safe during this. And uh, it's nothing but appreciation here. Okay, we're just trying to, to load this up. We're a little bit uh, off on the alignment, so I just checked the other side to make sure that we could get this back. All right, then there should be one more of those screws in here. There it is. So credit to uh, our viewer who sent this in. It uh, seems to have all the pieces and parts at the moment. One more, and then we can tighten these down. Oh, we're not quite there. The, uh, you can see the jack is blocking the hole here a little bit. We'll just move that over. With that pin. That pin, people ask me, where do you get that pin? That pin is actually the bottom of a, an electrical tester that uh, broke. It's a circuit tester. Uh, I, it's a wonderful tool. And if I ever lost that or it became dull or whatever, I'd run right out and get one again at the circuit tester and remove the bottom of it because that is some piece of uh, handy equipment here for a whole bunch of things, including alignment. And uh, as you saw me poking out the pin on the, uh, the gear sleeve and so on. Okay, once I get that last one set, then I go back in alternating fashion and tighten it. It sounds like we got real here. Look for the sleeve now. Find the uh, star adjuster. I'd say we're pretty well set. So now comes the fun part always, and that's to install that level line. To do that, you remove the adjuster on the gear side. You get started by taking your side plate sure there's a little bit of grease onto the spool shaft there. Oops, we're missing the metal piece there. Let's grab that metal piece. The trim ring. Again, it's got a lot of grease on it there. Let's make sure that gets off. And then what I like to do is I like to install and just start the threading of a screw. And you'll see why in a moment. But I just like to catch the first two or three courses of the thread. Just like that. We have another one. And go to the opposite side. And you'll notice I'm not putting them in over here where that uh, the worm is going to go yet. But I do this for stability so that I can. Uh, I can have some play in this as I go to set the uh, level wine guide sleeve, whatever they want to call that. I'm sure there's a fancy name for it that I don't know. And you, you're going to find, oh, there's a little dirt in the bottom of that. Let's get that out while we're doing this. There's two prongs on each end and they sit in the holes in the, the real body's side plates. There's a a long and a short end. The short end comes to the front 
and then you got to set the, the prongs into the holes like that. Now you know why I set this at a, at a starting point, because now I can tighten that down and that's going to hold that shield. Don't worry about the line guide at this point. I've seen a lot of people try to put everything together at once without tightening line screws. And all I've seen is a lot of frustration as folks uh, try to do a del delicate balancing act that just doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to put this back together now with a short screw so that it doesn't come through. There's one more, should be one more long screw here. And one more short screw for the face down there. And then we still got to find the short screw for the other side, but I'm not, not terribly worried about that at the moment. I'll put that one on this side where it belongs. Okay, now we want to make sure that uh, we set our our level wind feature. Now this one came in to reinstall but there's no sense not servicing the pawl and everything while you're at it. We've serviced everything else on this reel so I'm going to pull the pawl carrier out just to check the pawl. The pawl has good sized teeth on there. You can see on both sides. I'm just going to use my little scraper here. You don't have to pull the pawl out of the, the assembly but we'll do that just to show you. It's a cylindrical piece with the two prongs up top. Drop of oil is all you need inside the carrier. Then you just reinstall. Now when you go back to reinstall, chances are the teeth are not going to grab that uh, groove right away. So you just have to kind of keep working it. And eventually you'll find where you tighten a little bit. And then eventually you'll bring it down to where there's no gap and you have it set. We're going to oil the balance of this. We've had conversations about oil versus grease. I don't like grease, particularly on a reel that's going into salt water because that grease tends to, to catch microparticles and then uh, once it traps those, you're kind of in trouble. All right, now we have the assembly. We're going underneath the shield. We're coming out the hole where that adjuster was, which is why we took that out. We're setting the top into the groove and then we're pushing all the way over to the side. If we flip it so that the reel drives at this point, you'll make sure that you've pulled the assembly all the way in. A little bit of grease onto the opening on the side adjuster. And this is where you just need to be a little bit patient as you get the threads. You're trying to hold your, your line guide assembly the right way. And let's, yeah, we got it running. Okay, so we've got to put the handle on. And then we've got to search out the right screw for the other side. So I guess it's going to be in one of the other positions on the crossbars. And it'll just be a matter of finding when. If you were servicing your reel and you did not pull off the gear sleeve, uh, you could put oil in there. That's what it says on the cap. It says oil. Uh, you could oil that and you can also do it as an interim step along the way over the course of your your fishing season. If you find uh, that it's bogging down a little bit, go ahead and add a drop of oil or two. But we took the whole gear sleeve off so that's not necessary. I'm just trying to find the wrench here. There it is. So that we can complete the step with this. So in this case we got lucky. All the pieces were here. And uh, just dropped a little set screw for the handle nut. Here we go. We got lucky here, so uh, you know it's worth. If you know what you're doing, it's worth taking the, the chance on one that would come up uh, as a parts reel in a bag. All right. So we know that this one's right. So we got three screws. One of those should be short needs to be swapped out with the other. In this case, we may have hit it on, nope, that's the same size. We're down to two. 
50% chance. Do we feel lucky? We'll see. So if you uh, if if you have a reel to be repaired that's in this kind of condition, <laughs> you take it apart and you kind of got stumped along the way and you need an assist. Well, I do repair reels by mail, and if you uh, if you find yourself in that position, then uh, follow the information on the business card that's at the end of this video, and I'll be happy to uh, correspond with you on my email about the uh, repair services. If you uh, are stuck on a particular piece, there we go, we found that it was the last one, of course. If you're stuck on a particular piece of a project, then I can talk you through it or uh, you know, give you a, a hint along the way to get you back on track. Do that. But I think the important ones are go get a schematic and take pictures along the way of the reel as you're disassembling it. All right, this is the short screw now. We did find it. It belongs here. The long screws come through the bottom of the reel seat, and if they stick out here, when the line is unspooling, every now and then it could trap, so uh, that can lead to a break off or a snag or a backlash. So you want to do your best to keep them where they are just flush. All right, let's give it a drive. Look at that reel, huh? nice. Doing what it should be doing, tighten up the drags, the drags are performing well. Adjust the spool, there should just be a little bit of play in that spool, there you go. And this one's ready to go back fishing again. So from bag to uh, to fishing, just like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, comments and questions are welcome, as are uh, subscriptions. Uh, please subscribe to see more of these if you like that. And again, if you're a first responder, thank you so much for everything it is that you're doing during the pandemic. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.